in spring MVC discussion and we understand that using spring MVC we can able to build web applications without writing a controller like servlet classes without servlet classes we can use predefined dispatcher servlet as a servlet and it can able to handle any request which is coming from view so a predefined servlet class is going to help you a lot earlier we used to write a servlet class there we used to read data which is coming from front end once after reading data there we used to send that data to controller class and we used to send out dot print and response via servlet now we are not going to write any servlet just we are going to use existing servlet which is dispatcher servlet application means it can have any number of front end pages login page employees view page or edit pages some other dashboard pages or metrics pages you may have any number of pages submit request from any page the request should go to dispatcher servlet every request should go to dispatcher servlet for that purpose we will use url pattern to map any request send any request submit any button from your front end see that it should go to dispatcher servlet so if you configure a servlet which accepts every request from front end if you configure a servlet in such a way which accepts every request from front end you can call that servlet as a front controller so this is the first class which is going to execute every time not only in spring mvc in spring boot or microservices implementations also when you submit a front end request or any rest request first it will hit dispatcher servlet class such a important class dispatcher servlet is we are configuring this dispatcher servlet for every front end view request so dispatcher servlet will take the request from front end and it will enquire about your front end request i submitted from view 1 view 1 request will come to dispatcher servlet then it will start enquiring about it okay you requested me to execute let me find out which class which controller class implemented for you dispatcher servlet will inspect for this view 1 what is the action for that action what is the controller for every view you will be having a controller method for every view definitely there will be a controller method so this dispatcher servlet will enquire about that controller method which controller method should execute for your view it will be handled by dispatcher servlet so it will take one helper class help here handler mapping is a helper class it helps to find the address of the destination when i submit view from here when i submit this view request dispatcher servlet will take help of handler mapping in it will identify which controller method should be executed so based on the handler mapping input your request will go to so also controller so here your controller is going to read data which is coming from you and from here you can send data next to next layers once execution is completed you can get the response back and this response we should give to dispatcher servlet in the form of model and view in the form of model and view object we will give response back to dispatcher servlet 
dispatcher servlet will give you data. We give response to dispatcher servlet in the form of model and view. So model and view is a combination of one map object, you know, map holds key and value, one map object and a view name, Kali view name, nothing extra, only view name we redirect just one map with the view name we send back to dispatcher servlet so what it will do whichever data you submit from the map it will keep it into response your map data it will keep it into response Whichever map you return, that will keep it into your response object. Otherwise, you can say request to scope. In request to scope, it will put your map object. And view name, you return only view name, right? For that view name, it will append location first slash view name dot jsp or html whichever extension it is that extensions it will append you will be sending only model and view from your controller to dispatcher servlet so it will keep your model and view data into request to scope and you send only view name let's say your page is success dot jsp which is there in some output folder so you will be sending only success from here for that success location and this extensions will be appended by your view resolver class there is a view resolver class which help you to append the location to your view name and the extension so that your dispatcher servlet can able to use a response dot to send a redirect method to send a response back to view <clears throat> right kali view name it cannot able to redirect a page with view name it needs location and extensions also view resolver will help from that part okay let me explain you this through example step by step okay carefully follow so that easily you will understand how entirely mvc framework is working basic example I will give you before giving a real-time end-to-end example I'll give one basic example to make you understand architecture okay first you need to create a dynamic web project for Spring MVC you need to create a dynamic web project okay first uh, let's create a dynamic web project Spring MVC example first let's create dynamic project open eclipse file new project dynamic web project choose this dynamic web project next put some name here okay so spring mvc 
architecture you are going to understand that spring mvc architecture from this example will be understanding next just finish it so this is the first step that you need to do spring mvc architecture hereafter you add mvc jar files Spring MVC jar files, which is Spring Web jar. There is a Spring Web jar. You need to add this jar along with your core jar files. Spring core jar files we have, right? Spring core, Spring context. I will add all the jar files, but you can see there is a spring web jar you need to add that spring core spring context and commons login there is a commons jar file that you need to add where do you need to add add spring mvc jar files into lib folder add them into lib folder so this is the lib folder just a minute so add your mvc jars into lib folder right click build path configure build path add external jars here you can see this is commons login file and uh, You can see spring what is it? See here spring web jar file. Okay. And along with these two context core jar file. Okay, but what I will do, I am adding all the jars. The four jar files are enough. But as we are going to use other features also, right? I am adding all the jars. No, everything is copied. Next step. There is a predefined servlet in this web jar file. In Spring web jar file, there is a predefined servlet. Configure predefined dispatcher servlet into web.xml file as a front control. Carefully, you should do this. Dispatcher servlet into web.xml file as a front controller. Front controller means if you configure any servlet, URL pattern like this star dot star, you can call it as front controller. In web.xml file, your URL pattern should match with this expression so that every request can go to this dispatcher servlet okay so where do we have this dispatcher servlet under spring web file 
if you open Spring Web Char file, you can see that class also. A predefined circuit. Where is it? Uh, this one. Under Spring Web Jar file, there are a lot of classes they implemented, a lot of predefined classes internally helping us as a framework. So under this org spring framework dot web dot okay let's check i don't see my servlet class here We see we have one more. Let's check carefully. Org Spring Framework dot web dot servlet type. So there should be one more packet. Okay, let me identify that. Okay, now it is. Let me see. Dispatcher servlet. Under ORG Spring Framework web dot servlet. There we have this class. Jar file is ORG Spring Framework web dot servlet jar. Okay. So I need to configure this predefined servlet. in web.xml file so in our application you refer this jar file ok here it's a org spring framework web.sarmel so this is the package org spring framework web.sarmel here you can see dispatcher select class a predefined servlet okay so this predefined servlet class is going to handle every front end request so you need to configure this class org spring framework web dot servlet dot dispatcher servlet configure this in web dot xml file okay so just what you need to do as a third step configure predefined dispatcher servlet into web dot xml file as a front controller open web dot xml file configure servlet here 
servlet to tag servlet mapping tag two tags we will use under servlet tag you should configure your dispatcher servlet servlet name give some name ds servlet class we just copied the path right give complete path here and coming to servlet mapping same name you have to use here copy paste and you have to configure url path so every request should come to this dispatcher servlet start dot you can give extensions also star dot star or you can give some extension also here every action can have one extension common extension you can give let's say your application name is student management system you can give sms or your organization name you want to give give anything i'll explain about it okay so you need to configure dispatch a servlet as a front controller here that is also done then next you can implement use cases you can implement your front end and back end you can implement your front end and back end you can continue with your business now first you need to do this basic configuration every time okay this is not error okay something xml formatter issue okay just ignore it now let me create a front end here let me create a front end simple file okay index dot html and i'm creating a form here simple <clears throat> hello my action is simple hello for this action i need control and extension we allowed in web.xml file is dot rp if you want to put xyz also you can put the same thing should be there in dot xml okay now from here i want to send simple name to my backend simple form i am creating here say hello that's it my form is ready when i submit the request should go to <coughs> backend So here you can create a controller on dot rbu dot student management system dot web create a controller class actually earlier we used to use programmatic approaches i'll give you one programmatic example next we will see annotation okay hello controller you have to write a controller class by implementing from controller interface there is a controller interface you need to implement your controller from that particular interface it is looking like your http servlet right generic servlet but exactly not same so implement your controller from controller interface and this controller is not related to servlet this is your spring class this class object need to be created by spring only spring should manage this not by tomcat 
okay so uh, when you submit your request from here first this request will go to web.xml file the request will go to web.xml file url pattern is matching and for this ds name there is a surlet class dispatcher surlet so your request will go to dispatcher surlet from there it should come to hello controller so that mapping is missing you need to do that mapping in spring xml file you have to create spring xml file here for this example right you can download let me see examples here okay simple hello world example you have i think including jar files also i have coded it you can get it So I need one spring XML file also here. And this file name, this is spring XML only. File name should match with the, this name, TS. This is one way of configuration, okay? Spring XML file you should create under webinf ds xml file. Here you need to map your request. I am submitting from here. Say hello with the action hello.rbu. So you need to configure that here. Controller mapping. B name is your URL pattern. What URL pattern we used here? Hello.rbu. So you need to put the same action here, hello.rb. It should be mapped to your hello controller, com.rbu.sms.web.hello.controller. Done. So that when you submit request from here, this name can be forwarded to your hello controller in this request object via dispatcher select request. Front end request, every request should be mapped to dispatcher select. So we mapped it via expression. We are telling hello any request, either it is hello or hi registration login whatever it is that action should contain dot r view that is sufficient <coughs> name can be anything but for this particular name there should be a controller so that mapping we are doing here when the complete request hello dot r view comes to web dot xml file your dispatcher surlet should know which controller should be executed by reading this mapping it will understand okay I need to execute hello controller class. So your request will come to hello controller. So here you can read your data. <coughs> yeah. We have index.html. You want one more page? You can have any number of pages you can redirect you can redirect your pages let's say you have hello.rbu if you have hi one more page say hi so when you click this you need to have one more controller 
high dot RBU. For high dot RBU, you need to have one more controller, high controller. Application means you will have a lot of front end pages. Obviously, you will be having a lot of back end controller classes. Same way you can implement a handle request method here. You can read name for the high form also. It was not get parameter name. System dot out dot println i to so and so name. If you submit from hello. Hello to particular name. Simple any number of forms. I have one form hello, one form hi. Exactly. If you know servlets, you can handle it in many ways. Every form you can forward to controller. Ooh, that we will see. That we will see. Okay. We can send response back in the form of model and view. Okay, first let's understand forward flow. Okay, how we are sending from front end to back end controller. The next response flow we'll see. Okay, so here I have simple forms. As soon as you submit it, the request should go to either hello or hi. So for hello, I have mapping. Here for hello, hello controller need to execute it. For hi, you need to have hi dot rbu hi controller. Yeah, for now I'm not sending any response. This view resolver concept not required. I'm just commenting. Just my two controllers configured here. If you see if you observe here, first time we are using bean name, earlier we used bean id. Instead of id, we use name here. Under name, we configure actual URL pattern of our actions. So that when you submit request to dispatcher servlet, dispatcher servlet can able to understand your mapping, view to controller mapping. So based on that mapping only, your controller is executed. These controllers are executed. Okay, so just run this and see. We are printing output in console only. We are not sending any response. Finish. So if I send name from here, say hello, the request went to backend, hello to Navi. From hello controller, that is printing. If I submit the same name from here, say hi. From hi controller, it is executed. To see, first when I submit a request from here for this action 
for this action the url pattern is hello.rb so first i loaded this page submitted it so this is the action hello.rbu and in get method it is carrying your data name equal to actual value so hello.rbu action first it will try to find out in web.xml file as soon as you submit it first this action should be there in your web.xml file so it will ask tomcat hey tomcat i got have a request hello.rbu do you have any controller for that so tomcat will verify url patterns so here it have only one url pattern with expression we are saying star expression we given dot rbu so it will ask what is your action it will say my action is hello dot rbu okay you are allowed as you have dot rbu extension any name you come with hello hi or xyz i'll accept you and i'm sending you your request to dispatcher select so it will forward your request to dispatcher select as a next step it will forward the forward your request to dispatcher surlet then dispatcher surlet will do what this dispatcher surlet will read your spring xml file internally dispatcher surlet is starting ioc you remember right so dispatcher surlet will load this dispatcher ds-surlet.xml file why i used ds-surlet because my surlet name is ds okay so ds hyphen surlet.xml file it will load into your ioc earlier we used to write right application context ap equal to new class path xml application context now we are not doing that directly your spring xml file it is loading into dispatcher surlet dispatcher surlet is having that similar logic which have we written earlier in our surlet example we have done that if you see in our surlet example we are starting ioc container from servlet here we are writing that logic application context ap equal to new class path xml application context and loading our spring xml file but now we are not doing it when you configure a xml with the servlet name with this name this name hyphen servlet when you hyphen when you configure a xml file with that name with the servlet name if you observe carefully same servlet name we use ds hyphen servlet.xml directly this xml will be loaded into your ioc so this xml loaded into ioc it will create two objects hello controller and hi controller and this two controller classes having handle request method so when this handle request method will be executed as in when you executed it when you submitted it your request method will be executed <coughs> dispatcher surlet straight away it will forward your request and response to this handle request method so that you can do whichever operations you want to do here from here you can execute the remaining flow here you may connect with your service then service can connect with the dao dao will use jdbc or hibernate and it will complete your crud operations but this is how we can bring front end request to deliver spring controller class without writing servlet logic no servlet now servlet is avoided we don't have servlet just we used a predefined dispatcher servlet as a servlet here that's it that is going to help you why i need this without servlet can't i write means no without servlet we can't imagine java based web applications or rest applications this class particularly in spring will do a lot of help to you just you need to configure it as a front controller that's it but you need to do this minimum configuration <clears throat> so you can able to forward your request to front end to back end okay now how i can send a response back from back end to front end i got request to hello controller and hi controller i want to send response blank page i am seeing now here i want to give response back how i can give you need to construct to response here using model and view model and view is a class 
create model and view object what you can do in this model and view you can put output <coughs> you can put output with the page name output to data actually output data with the output page name output data with the output page name how you need to create simply this object in this object you can put output data how i can put create a map object based on your data create a map object i want to send simple string response back so i'm creating a hash map object here in this map i'll put one output message my output key is message value i'll put here here i am doing this in hello.println right i'll keep it here this output i want to send this is my key under key the value will be hello to whatever name you submit okay good so i can put here my map object along with the view name you should put it what is your output page i want to send hello.jsp as a output but you need not to give this extension remove this basically this hello.jsp should be there in some location right web inf slash abc folder slash hello.jsp but you should not give this complete path path and extensions are not required to give here just a page name <coughs> enough finally return this model and view as a output model and view as a output same story with the high controller also to high controller <coughs> high to whoever submit request key is message final i want to return output page high dot jsp so your page name and map object that's it now how i can create this output pages where should i create how i can redirect them so to redirect them you need view resolver help view resolver help required first let's create those pages under web inf i am creating a folder output or responses you can create with any name responses under this responses i wanted to create my jsp pages hello dot jsp So this page I want to redirect and here I want to read that output you can read out here directly whatever map object you have constructed that is like a request dot get attribute request a scope object you can read your message here how I kept it into model and view. How I can use request internally? Dispatcher servlet is going to put your map data into request scope. So you can use request scope to read your message. String message and you can print it. Simple expression type. same way you can create hi page also hi dot jsp same key is same message in hi page also it will print that so now i want to redirect hi page from hi controller hello page from hello controller so i constructed model and view 
and I have constructed response pages also here. But here no view resolver configured. You should configure view resolver here. One more bean class, a predefined bean. The class name is internal resource view resolver class. This class is having two setter methods. One is set to prefix and a set to suffix. Setter method I am calling internal resource view resolver setter method set prefix. Prefix means the output page location under web INF. Our output page location is responses. That's it. Give your output page location and there is a set suffix method. Under that set suffix method, give your output page extension. Sometimes your output pages may be HTML. Sometimes they are JSP pages. So you have dynamic option here to change. Put dot JSP as my page is JSP page. That's it. Now again restart this application. And now this time you can expect output in the front end. The response code also returned. Just a minute. Run on server. Next. Okay. Application is getting started. Okay. Now this time, if I submit hello, I got a output page. Hello dot JSP page. So in that JSP page, I am seeing this output. If I submit it from high, I am getting this output from high page. See the beauty. You don't have any servlet, but you are able to building web application. It is all possible because of this predefined dispatcher servlet class. Lot of stuff doing for us. So even if you want to test this right, you can test it and just run it. Slash application name. And then we see architecture. Try submit it and see you will get output. Can everyone try this? Yeah, I can see that you are getting responses.
right but not like servlet we used a different concept together using dispatcher servlet we played it we submitted our request first from front end this requests are going to web.xml identifying the controller from web.xml file so which is dispatcher servlet for all your actions then first your request will received by dispatcher servlet from here it will forward to your controller to forward to your controller it will read your spring xml file there we configured our controller classes as beans with the exact url pattern so that your request redirected to this controller classes once the request received in controller class as it is a http request object you can read do your business finally send output in the form of model and view model and view can hold a map object you know map can hold key value pair so under that map you can put your key and value and your output page name as a response and return this model and view back to dispatcher servlet so the dispatcher servlet will immediately ask view resolver what is the location and the extension for this hello page so then this view resolver will help go to web inf responses folder there find dot jsp extension for this hello so as it said it will go to responses folder under the inf there it will find hello dot jsp this page will be redirected back to end user so when it is redirected to end user when it is redirected to end user under that output page we are using request scope object to read our data request scope object to read our data message we are reading which we kept under map object so whichever map object you constructed end of the day the map object will be converted into request scope that's why i can able to use a request scope dot get attribute i can read my message if it is a string string let's say if you put employee complete object itself as a response i can read that employee object here and i can read all the parameters id name email address and i can print here if i send list from there i can read the list also here anything you can read and you can print present to the front end like this so this is how the response will go back hope you understand request and response flow using dispatcher servlet okay tomorrow i'll explain one more time this front end and back end flow with the annotations and we will do one end to end example okay i will try to put one login after login simple crud operation example we will do login logout with simple crud operation okay basic example with hibernate and all annotations end to end example i'll cover hope you understand this architecture right simple just we are configuring dispatcher servlet between our controllers and front end bus no much story in simple lines between our front end and back end controllers we are using dispatcher servlet to forward and to send response it is working as a mediator between controllers and front ends that's it with two helper classes handler mapping and view resolver okay yeah hope you guys are clear at least the basic idea you got i believe s yes. yeah if it is a servlet you are going to write lot of servlets that is not recommended if you write lot of servlets there is no control over your web application who will control your application in terms of security and following the similar patterns nobody right if it is a common gateway via this one we can take every request and if any common operations if we want to execute we can somehow manage here 
like as a framework they implemented security a lot of things right a lot of converters to send the response back to make our life simple a common controller they used if they allowed you to write servlets you don't know how your application end of the day you will implement okay lot of abstraction also happening if when you use dispatcher servlet you are not starting your ioc container and not bothering about spring how you are starting and how objects are creating how to get that object and invoke your controller we are not doing all that okay you will realize it how advanced how much advanced features dispatcher servlet is provided but if we go with our own servlets we can't achieve all that okay framework as a framework it, it it is want to provide so many features to us via dispatcher servlet if you don't want them you can ignore dispatcher servlet and you can write servlets also okay yeah. i'll explain it okay one more time i'll i'll redraw this entire picture okay i'll explain to you okay just go through these two videos yesterday's uh, last session and this one okay i'll upload it immediately after this session just go through them try to understand this flow okay tomorrow once again i'll explain end to end flow with annotations we'll do end to end example also okay there i'll show you simple login redirect operations basically whichever we need for web application okay